Hello, everyone. Thank you for interest in EH207, which is the Chinese economic history class. So I am the instructor for EH207, which is also listed as EH217 and EH218. Um, so the course is a, a full unit course for the second year students. It focuses on the Chinese economic history. It has two parts. The first part discusses the China in a chronological order. So it started with traditional China and then to the Great Divergence phase, and then moving on to the end of the, uh, the last dynasty of China, the, the Qing dynasty and the Republican China period, and then also the communism in the more recent form. So in the second half of the course, I will then focus on the topics that is the most relevant for economic growth. So this includes topics such as culture and institutions and social capital geography. So for you, there would be two ways to take this class. You can either take it as a full unit course or you can take it as two half unit course or be enrolling either of the two. And this will give you the flexibility to, uh, to make some uh, decisions about what part of this course you wanted to focus on more. So the course will have um, a large variety of materials and that includes some works by historians, economists, and economic historians. Um, it will have both the type of work that will be uh, mostly a, a narrative and big picture narrative, but also very specific uh, research designs and including uh, work using uh, causal identification that is the uh, devoted to you know, precisely identifying the effect of a particular historical event. So we will have both type of the research in this course. Um, so the recommendation will be ideally we'll have some exposure, prior exposure to statistical methods. Um, if not, then you will still have a chance to, to catch up on econometrics that within this class. So don't worry too much about it if you were haven't really done a, a specific course on the kind of metrics before. Um, so um, as to the, the parts I'd like to, uh, to recommend the most, or, or I think we, uh, we will probably get a lot of uh, useful exposure to, will be the part in the, in the second half, in which we discuss is the role of culture and institutions. So I personally have done a lot of work in this area. And this is also an area um, which is like the hottest and then fast growing areas so it's in the literature of economic growth. So through this, in those topics, through a set of uh, research, we'll be able to show you that how this uh, culture and institutions, which is typically an output or a product of a very long historical process, can powerfully explain uh, disparities in the modern world, the economic and political disparities in the modern world. Um, and there will also be um, there will also be opportunities to look at and how does other uh, watershed historical events in particular, in particular and also some of the influences the modern world through various channels. So put it all together, um, I, I mean, this is going to be a course that it will really bring you uh, some new knowledge about China. So that is, if that is a, um, so that is the part that is going to be the closest to, to the economic history. Uh, per se, but then also it would be a useful course uh, to, to, uh, to take if you're also interested in understanding the determinants of economic worlds such as cultural institutions and the geography. Yeah. So for the latter category, then you mostly be looking at China as a, as a case study, as a, as a testing ground, where all those important and those factors, the slow moving factors that will play out and how you can then look at um, in this laboratory of China, then how this culture and institutions affect economic growth in their own ways. So this is uh, this is it. Um, I hope that you will um, be able to learn a lot from this course and interact with your classmates and both in and out of the class and get a chance to also to hone the writing skills and uh, to read a lot. Uh, and I will look forward to see you in this form.